Hello, hello, and welcome back to my channel. My name is Ines, and I love everything AR and VR related. Two weeks ago, I had a workshop about social AR with MetaSpark, and I promised to record it, so here it is. Let's create a new sharing effect that basically means that we can use it in Instagram or Facebook. Because my workshop was part of the Amaze Indie Game Festival, I created a bunch of assets that kind of fit the vibe of the event, but you can really use any assets you like. So let's start with a simple face effect. To attach objects to the user's head, we need a face tracker. Right click on the focal distance object, add object, and then select face tracker. Now you can drag and drop your objects into the hierarchy under the face tracker. I have some hard sunglasses that are a bit too big, so I'm going to use the scale tool to adjust it. Next, I want to add a material. We can do that by selecting the mesh. And on the right side in the inspector, we can click on the drop down and create a new material. You can find it in the asset panel and I'm just gonna rename it. You can add a texture by clicking on the drop down in the material inspector and selecting your texture. And here I'm just fixing the position of the glasses again. There's still one thing we need to fix because we can see the sides of the glasses even though they should be behind the head. So. I right click on the face tracker and add a face mesh. This checkerboard tells us that it's missing a material. So again, I go to the inspector and create a new material. So we want the material to be invisible, but also hide objects behind them. This type of material is called an occluder and we can create it very easily by setting the shader type to flat and then down at the opacity slider, we drag it down to zero. Now we can still see it, so we have to drag the occluder on top of the sunglasses so they get rendered over it. And one thing you might notice is that through the eyes, for example, we can still see the sunglasses and you can see the holes also in the outlines of the mesh. So all we have to do is uncheck the eyes and the mouth tick on the mesh and now everything gets occluded properly. One thing I noticed through this video is that the actual glasses are only shown on the back side and we can fix this very easily. Go in the material and check the tick double sided. So if you have this problem it's most likely because your normals are not looking in the right direction but this is an easy fix. So next let's animate a little bit and I can show you a very easy trick here. I'm going to drag this object into the hierarchy. You can choose whatever you like again. I'm positioning it. And I want this to spin on top of the head. And Spark makes this easy. You can just right click on the object, go down to actions and click spin. Now you can see the patch editor popping up. And this is the place where we do all the programming, all the interactions. But for now, let's look at what we have. We have a loop animation node, a transition node that transitions one value to a second one, and then attach the Amaze Objects 3D rotation node. You have the option to mirror the animation with this tick, so it just goes back and forth. And you can change the duration of the whole animation. On the transition node, you can set the start rotation and the end rotation. And underneath, you can change the curve type, like how much easing should be in the animation. You can play around with these values. Let's also give this font a material. I'm just going to use the same one because it's sharing a texture. And this is basically the easiest setup for a face tracker and simple animation. And you can apply this to any type of tracking. Let's say we want to have a target tracker that adds a little square in the viewport. And you can set the image that you want to use as a tracker in the texture slot here. For the workshop, I use the Amaze Festival sticker. So whenever the sticker is recognized in the camera port, I want to show the sword. 
So I'm just going to drag and drop it into the hierarchy, position it again, and that's it. The same goes for a hand tracker, for example. Let's just add it into the project. And I'm just going to use the sword from the image tracker and place it inside the hand tracker. And I think that was super fun that if you show your hand, you have a little Minecraft sword. I'm going to delete the image tracker again, just to clear up the viewport a little bit. And now I'm changing back to the person because I want to add a background image and show the person inside of the award ceremonies wearing these sunglasses with the Amaze font. And for that, we click on the device object and under segmentation, we choose the person segmentation one. So this adds two more nodes to our setup. We don't have to pay too much attention to this. You can change the values here to soften the edge a little bit. I usually keep it to a very low value. What also appeared is this canvas object and it has two children, the background and the person. Instead of this blue background, we want to have our texture. So I select the material and just add our texture into the texture slot. It looks blue right now because they set a blue color. If you change this back to white, it will look normal. So now our person is at the award show, but what's missing is our 3D assets that we just added. And that's because they are rendered behind the texture. And if we would move it forward, you can see that it's actually clipping through the texture. If you want to cheat, you can change the canvas space to world. That allows you to move the texture in the viewport and you can just drag it all the way back and scale it up and try to make it fit. But we don't want to do that because it's very hacky and not an elegant solution. It will cause problems. Instead, what we can do is go on the device and select default pipeline under the render paths. This will add a bunch of new nodes to our setup. The most important one, the scene render paths. If you click on this little arrow, you can see a preview of what the filter will look like. So to bring back our 3D assets, we create a parent object and set the trackers as children of this scene object. Then we drag the parent object into the patch editor and connect it to the scene object input. That way we tell the render paths which objects we want to render. And right now everything is black and that is because we have to move our light sources into the parent object. So they also get taken into account when we render the objects. Instead of the camera view, we want to render our canvas as the background. But we cannot simply drag and drop it in here and connect it, that will throw us an error. So instead, what we have to do is we create a second render pass. I'm just duplicating this one. And we tell this render pass to only render our canvas with the person segmentation. Now we can connect the output of that to the background input. And this way, our 3D assets will always get rendered on top of the person segmentation. Let's add some particles and some interaction. I go under the face tracker and right click, add object and then particle emitter. Positioning it again so they get emitted right above the head of the user. So first of all, let's add a material by clicking on the plus in the material section and create a new material. And renaming it to stay tidy. As a texture, I'm using this little pixel heart and that already looks pretty cute. Here, I'm just playing around with the values a little bit, so I'm gonna fast forward it.
Once you're satisfied with your particles, let's add some interaction. I want to spawn the hearts only when the user opens their mouth. So to add a face event, we click on the face tracker and under patch, we can select a bunch of face events and this time I'm gonna go with open mouth. Let's make some space and look at the nodes. We have a face finder, a face index that keeps track of which face got detected, the face tracker node that gives us a bunch of interesting outputs that we can use for the effect, and last but not least, the mouth open node. So we want to manipulate the birth rate value of the particle effect based on if the mouth is open or not. So I'm gonna add a animation node after the mouth open one. And this also automatically gives us a pulse node, which we will use later. Now, in between here, we plug in a transition node. And this one might look familiar to the first animation we had, the spin one. But this time we don't need a vector 3, but just one number. I want to animate this number from 0 to 5. And then I connect the output to the birth rate value. To animate it back to zero when the mouth is closed, we connect the off output of the pulse node with the reverse input. So now every time the mouth is open, the particle effect will be visible. And if we close the mouth again, it will stop emitting the particles. As a little bonus, I want to talk real quick about the screen tab, which is also an interesting way of adding interaction to your effect. So here I just right clicked into the patch editor and added a screen tab node. And as you can see, it gives us a vector two and we can use it to, for example, place an object at the specific location where we tapped. So let's see how this works. To simulate a screen tab in this preview, we have to click on the option and then select simulate touch. Once you did that and you tap, you can tell that this value node they added actually gives out different numbers. Let's attach a node that is called screen to world position. And that is transforming this vector 2 into a 3D position that we can use to place an object. I'm importing another asset, which is a pixelated hand object. And I make sure to drag it under this 3D content parent that we set up earlier for the scene render pass. I'm adding a material and then just scaling it down. To set the position of this finger via script, I click the little arrow next to the positions that will add the node into the patch editor. But once I connect the two nodes, you can tell that it kind of works. The finger is moving, but it's just too far behind the camera, so we can't really see it. So let's change that by giving the Z value a little offset. To do this, we need to unpack this 3D vector and then pack it again. And we can just take the X and the Y value how they are and connect it back into the 3D position. Now the Z value is always zero, so we can finally see it on the screen. But what happens now is that it's kind of a mirrored position. So to fix that, I will negate the X value. Basically it turns positive into negative and negative into positive values. So now everything is working as expected. I'm just slightly moving the mesh of the finger a little bit so that the center of the click is the finger itself and not the bottom of the hand. So the screen tab does not only give us a vector 2 output, it also gives us a pulse whenever we tap the screen. So I want to use this to animate the hand a little bit. So I want to scale the hand down and up again a little bit whenever I click to have a bit of a visual feedback. So I drag out the first output and add my best friend the animation node back in. Same game again, add a transition node after it, and this time I am checking what kind of scale the finger is right now. It's 444. Four, four. So this will be the start scale. And I want to scale it down to 333 three, three, just as a test. Also, this animation should be very short, so I'm going to change it to 0 0.2. And to scale it back up again, I'm going to add a delay node that is exactly the length like my animation, so 0 0.2 and plug it into the reverse slot. 
So now whenever I click, it does this little clicking animation and I think that's really cute. Just gonna make it a bit shorter, a bit more juicier. And that's it. You successfully completed this beginner spark crash course and made a cute little effect. Now, if you want to try this effect at any time during development, you can click on the phone icon here and send it to your Instagram account. You can also create a test link here and send it to your friends or your grandma or whoever is interested in this. And to publish it, you go under file and then publish. You can fill out some information here and then click on publish. Your browser will open and you can give it a name, choose an account where to upload it, select a preview video and a thumbnail, do some categories and all that stuff. And if you're done, you can submit it and they will review it and it will be live hopefully soon. And that's it for this crash course. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you made a really cute little effect. And of course, like and subscribe if you enjoyed this little tutorial and leave a comment with some feedback or ideas. And I hope to see you in the next one. Bye bye.